Good morning. This is uh, Coach Carey with Athletic Fuel Tank. How are you this morning? Hey, I just wanted to touch base with you guys. I I, I started a new program for youth athletes. Um, It's really about the performance, the recovery. There's a lot to do with um, youth athletes sports. Um, There's recreational sports and then there's competitive sports. Um, I have been a coach for almost two decades now. I've been a professional uh, educator for almost 30 years now. And one thing of working with kids that I've learned is their eating styles and their eating habits. Now, as you eat, your body is super resilient, super resilient when you're young. So you can eat a bunch of junk food and it doesn't affect your body at all. And then, of course, as we get older, we have to start looking at, of course, as parents, we have to start looking at how and what we eat and how would it how it affects our bodies and we have to avoid these things and try these things and um and on the internet and i know that there's just all of these fad diets a fad diet is a diet that just comes around and everyone's doing it it's popular so it must be well well researched and and figured out you know they figured out all the secrets and a lot of times what they're really doing is they're just uh trying to sell you something um and so I've noticed, I thought, you know, okay, with my kids, they're in sports um, and I've been working um, as a coach for so long and I, I kind of go to recognize what's important. And, you know, for my daughter on her soccer teams and um, through gymnastics and, and dance and things of that nature, I've noticed that as she got older, the requirements were more necessary. I needed to really focus on uh, the things that were important for her diet. I was uh, focusing on her training, her access to training. So there was a lot of components involved as a coach, but also as a father who was trying to make the best possible connection for his daughter. Um, so I think what had happened is, let me tell you a little bit about myself um, to know the journey that I have taken. And then I can introduce my daughter, Sierra, as she was the uh, three-time varsity athlete um, uh, in her high school, um, taking uh, banners and medals home and going to state championship as a freshman. Um and then, you know, her involvement with club play, uh, multiple sports, um, really allowed me to access um, a little bit more. I'm an educator by profession. Um, I really like the aspect of research and understanding how things work. And now I understand how kids' minds work, how their physiology works, how their mindset is. But I wanted to see if nutrition could even be a greater asset, you know, something that was more beneficial to an athlete. And is it helpful for an athlete to eat a certain way to benefit their performance, to recover faster, to perform better than the other athletes? Is is there a way to do that? Or is it just eat whatever and the night before you go ahead and you've heard of carb loading, right? You just go ahead and eat a bunch of pasta and, and that's supposed to give you some slow release energy for that performance. But once I started doing the research and I decided I, I decided to go back to school and become a nutritionist and understand how nutrition and dietary attributes contribute to um to the athlete, not just the athlete, I'm talking about the youth athlete. Between the ages of 8 and 17, when we begin that competitive um, adventure into um, being more competitive, being better than other people, and providing an asset to a team, how do I do that? How do I do that in elementary school? Well, well, I do recreational sports, and sometimes you get involved in club sports. And then, then you move on to school sports and, and you want to be accepted in those school sports. You want to be added onto that team. You don't want to go try out and have to go home and tell your mom, yeah, I didn't make it, but why? So, um, and it's been a very interesting journey and I'd like to share that journey with you. Talk to you about some of the pitfalls that I faced as a father, pitfalls that I face as a coach, um, finding the deficiencies and performances of my athletes based on the fact of their mindset and their lack of desire to 
um, look at training as more than just training. You know, some, some athletes only go to, uh, you know, two, three weeks or two, three days of training a week and, and they feel that's an adequate amount. And you come to find out, I was, was told by a pretty smart guy, he says, if you train for one hour a day more than everyone else, by the time you graduate high school, you'll be an expert in that. And I really started thinking about that. It's like, well, that's like 365 more opportunities in a in a year. That's 365 more hours. I go, what do I do 365 hours a year other than work, right? Uh, feed my kids, right? Stuff like that. Train. Um, but then I started really thinking about that. Like, what if one hour a day more dedicating and focusing instead of on TikTok, instead of on Instagram, but focusing on what is valuable, what is important to me that's going to make me an expert by the time I graduate? I'd like to sign up for that. How do I do that? <clears throat> so what I did is I, I went to school and uh, during this epic pandemic, I decided school um, with my extra time was going to, was going to dedicate some um, time to be able to access that information. Um, and, and then once I've accessed that information, how do I curtail it and work it down for youth athletes between the ages of eight and 17? Um, it's, it's a very valuable uh, landscape because what you eat, what you don't eat, when you eat, what you shouldn't eat, how you should eat is uh, a very critical thing. And just because you eat those things doesn't mean you know how to eat those things. I mean, you have to understand it's a mindset. Um, and then finding the appropriate path, um, guidance with a mindset, you're going to be able to deliver a understanding. So I guess uh, for years I had coached and work with my families and I work with my families in a sense. I'm like, oh, okay, well, we need to do this. We need to do that. For example, why do we give uh, soccer players orange wedges in between or in the midpoint or halfway through the match? Why? And actually the research based on that shows that if you were to take a carbohydrate such as an orange with sugar, right? It has sugars in it. And you were to even just put that inside your mouth, wish it around and have that taste in there, that it will increase anywhere from 7 to 15% of your glycogen storage units and your fuel tank, your athletic fuel tank. And an athletic fuel tank is a tank that we fill up. And now I don't know if some of you have ever heard of the emotional fuel tank. Uh, when you're, when you're feeling like you're depressed and anxiety and you're sad and you just need something and right. And sometimes it's just a hug and that one hug could fill you up to make you feel content at ease, calm. Well, when you find out that works and an orange wedge in the middle of a match actually has a scientific base, well, there's got to be more to it. And like, like, Recently finding, you know, well, what is the best recovery um, thing? Because research says that an athlete has to recover um, those energies, especially if they have multiple competitions within a short time frame, is the fastest way to recover that energy that their body loses is within 30 minutes of the end of that competition. 30 minutes. You have a TikTok window. Tick tock, tick tock, right? And that window means you need to have carbs. And it says research also shows that the proteins before a match are non-essential according to research. And that having a protein and carb refueling of the body, there's three fuel systems. And one of them being that glycogen fuel system, it's allowing um, the body to refuel and to replant and to fill it back up, right? There's only a level of percentage per hour after a competition, 20%, five to 20% per hour that, a, that an athlete, especially a youth athlete needs to regain that energy. So that's a lot of information. And that's of course in, in a bunch of our courses and stuff we talk about and as we help the um, players do with it. Um, so I really wanted to talk to you about myself. So I decided I wanted long, long time ago is to be an educator, right? 
I work with children. But then once I got into education, I found out it wasn't just working with them. It was helping them to identify their pitfalls, their pitfalls in life. What, what offset them? You know, maybe it was a label. Maybe it was um, their family life. Maybe it was a socioeconomic uh, situation in their family. And I come to find out that it wasn't teaching math and language arts and English and all that stuff. Yay, that's cool. But it was empowering kids to realize that their future was much more than that. And if you could change that mindset of each of those students, then eventually those students would become empowered to believe the truth in, in that fact. And to believe that just because they had a bad childhood doesn't make them who they are. Just because um, they did something wrong one time or, or they, they habitually did something wrong that that made them a bad person. And then when we unlock that key, then the potential I saw for kids were to excel exponentially past their academic ability, but all of a sudden they became better people. And I realized like, well, if that's true, then what, what are the facets of a, of a, a youth athlete? What are three things a youth athlete needs that surpasses all these other things? And yes, nutrition, of course, is one of them, but what are the other ones? And I come to find out the other ones would be a balanced, hydrated system. Well, if you're not hydrated, your brain's not lubricated. If your brain's not lubricated, it doesn't function. There's memory function, cognitive function, executive function, and it's deficient, right? My background is an expert in brain um, and uh, learning disabilities, and also in aspects of autism and things like that, and being a reading specialist. So I've spent some time in classrooms learning how to unwrap those secrets so that I could share them with kids and unwrap that for them. But I found it was their mindset that actually unlocked it for them. So a youth athlete, what is the third one? Well, the third one happens to be, so we have a good balanced nutritional system, right? Fill in that athletic fuel tank. Hydrating, lubricating the brain. It functions the body, cools the body down. And the third one, of course, is sleep. Uh, the sleep parameter is seven to nine hours a night. Um, obviously, with the younger ones, even more is okay. Um, the most growth, growth of muscles, growth of brain mass, growth of bones um, happens when a child when a child is able to 